For our next investigation, we're going to study the solar flares. Now, we talked about prominences, but a related concept is a flare. And as, as you can imagine just from the name flare, this is going to be a, a sudden release of something on the sun. Now, we've already seen that the sun can be magnetically active, that the uh, magnetic field of the sun is going to be uh, uh, changing, intensifying, and bundling up. And magnetic fields store energy. And just electric fields store energy, magnetic fields store energy. So with the, where the magnetic field is stronger, there's more energy being stored. And so there's actually a formula for that. Now, you don't need to know that formula, but it's just kind of nice, you know, for me to know that a formula exists. And so this says that the density of the magnetic energies, that's the energy per volume, is related to that B in the equation is actually the magnetic field strength. And uh, uh, physicists use B for magnetic field. Uh, they don't use M because M is being used for, well, duh, mass. And so, uh, and it's proportionate to the magnetic field squared and constants, one half uh, of, uh, one, or rather one over two mu naught. Mu naught is the permeability of free space, so that's just a constant. So the magnetic field near a sunspot group, the magnetic field is arching up out of the sun and going back in. And so you have these regions here where the magnetic field is very strong, and so the at, at, at where the magnetic field is strong, you, you tend not to have a lot of motion, so that's where it's kind of dark right there. But the magnetic field is arching up. It's a very, very intense magnetic field. And what physicists realize is these loops of magnetic field up here, when they get close, can actually pinch off and reconfigure themselves into smaller loops and then a loop up there. Uh, this is called magnetic reconnection. Okay, when it reconnects like that, then the edges of that, that closed off region start, start uh, moving away, and, and now you have uh, a smaller loop in there. Now that releases a lot of energy when that happens, and so this magnetic reconnection uh, releases enormous amount of energy. Uh, remember, solar magnetic fields are very, very strong. Well, it turns out you're probably familiar with this magnetic reconnection and you don't realize it. Um, when you drive somewhere, if you've got a gasoline-powered car, then you need a spark plug in order to ignite the gas, uh, the, the, the gasoline and air mixture in, in, in the engine. Uh, the spark plug, in order for it to work, has to have high voltage. Well, the electrical voltage of your car is actually very low. Uh, 12 volt battery, it's really a little bit more than 12 volts. We call it 12 volt battery. And uh, if the alternator is working, it's a few volts more than that. But you, you, you're still talking fairly low voltage because you need thousands of volts, uh, well over a thousand volts, to get that spark. And so, how do you get a thousand volts? What happens is that the current goes through an ignition coil. The ignition coil under the hood somewhere is this thing that looks kind of like a Coke can. And that is your ignition coil. And so as the current is going through the ignition coil, it's a coil, so it produces a magnetic field. And then the magnetic field, uh, 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 as the current is going through there, when you, you, have the magnetic, you have the current going through there, and then you suddenly change that. And so the magnetic field reconnects, and when it does, then it, it uh, uh, releases all this energy as a spike of electrical energy. Uh, in the old days, you had a distributor that, that sent that, you know, you, using a, a spinning rotor to where whichever, whichever spark plug you needed to go to. A uh, modern uh, way of doing it uses an electronic system, but you still have this high voltage spike, and it eventually comes from the ignition coil, the reconnection there of the magnetic field. And that gives you this giant voltage spike. Now, if, if you don't believe me, then what you do is you just start your car, and let it get running, and then uh, open the hood, uh, lean on the hood, uh, uh, you know, uh, lean, lean, you know, you know, on, on, on something under there, get a good contact with one hand, the other hand, grab a, grab a plug wire. And you'll discover really quickly two things. First of all, yes, there's very high voltage inside the plug wire, and B, the insulation's not very good. <laughs> 
and so you get kind of a, a shock and so then you don't do that again uh, uh, in fact, uh, on old uh, cars, uh, as the cars get older, the, the insulation breaks down worse and worse. And so you can sometimes open the hood at night uh, when there's no lights around and the engine's running, you see little sparks flying all over the place under there uh, f uh, from, from little, little uh, otherwise un unseen, spark, uh, unseen cracks in the insulation in the plug wires. And that's why you're supposed to change the plug wires after a certain amount of time of running uh, to to uh, uh, make sure the spark gets to where it's supposed to go, which is inside the the engine. So the same thing happens on the sun, except imagine that you get that big of a spike of energy from something that's roughly the size of a Coke can, uh, uh, with not a very big magnetic field in it. Well, what would you get with something that's bigger than Earth? with a magnetic field stronger than any magnetic field we produce on Earth. Well, that would give you an enormous amount of energy. And so what would happen is that enormous amount of energy would result in, it, in this giant flare. So on the left of this picture, you see a sort of a time lapse of a flare happening. This is actually in ultraviolet light. You didn't actually see anything in the uh, visual image because the sunspots had already faded. So this tells you that you get a flare even if you don't see the sunspots themselves still. And so what happens is the flare, the way the flare works, is that you have this sudden release of energy. And so you have uh, near the surface of the sun, you have the, the sudden release of energy. And that giant amount of energy heats up the gas. And so in the ultraviolet, you would see it as a big flare. Well, it doesn't just heat up the gas. What it also does is, is it accelerates the gas at close to the speed of light upwards. And, but you have the corona up here above that. So it slams into the corona. And when it slams into the corona, then the sudden uh, uh, deceleration of the charged particles, you've actually blown apart the hydrogen atoms into protons and electrons. Uh, when they suddenly stop like that, they give off x-rays. And so this is your first indication that a flare is occurring, is you get these sudden blasts of x-rays, and then moments later it brightens up uh, uh, in the ultraviolet. And on rare, rare occasions, you sometimes see it brightening in the visual, uh, um, but, but not all the time. So this is your first indication of a flare, is this sudden blast of x-rays. Uh, those x-rays then also start shoving uh, pieces of the corona outward. And, uh, rather, the, the, the shock also sends pieces of the corona outward, which then go across the solar system. We'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, by the way, the, this idea of x-rays being blasted out like that, uh, anytime charged particles move and stop suddenly, then they give up x-rays. So a number of years ago, when they started switching from CRT tube TVs into the uh, flat screen uh, uh, TVs or flat screen monitors on, on computers, uh, those old tubes uh, had electrons that were going close to the speed of light, which stopped suddenly when they reached the screen, and they gave off x-rays. So those all, all, the, all those old tubes gave off lots of x-rays. Uh, to block the x-rays, since that's not good for you, they put lead in, in, embedded in them. And so they actually had substantial amounts of lead in them. And so when people started getting rid of their old TVs, a lot of people just threw them away. That actually technically violated federal law because all that lead was supposed to have been taken to a toxic waste site. Uh, so the same thing is happening. And so you can measure those x-ray uh, uh, bursts. Uh, this is a graph from a satellite orbiting Earth, and it's monitoring when these x-rays happen. And so each little spike in here is a x-ray burst from a flare. So they rate the x-rays by how intense they are. So an A-type uh, x-ray uh, 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 flare is, is less intense. A B type is more. Now this is a logarithmic graph right here. So each line is 10 times before. So a C type flare is 10 times a B type flare, which is 10 times an A type flare. Uh, an M type is 10 times a C type, which is 10 times a B type, which is 10 times an A type. So that means it's going to be uh, uh, 10,000 times bigger than an A. An X type flare is a huge flare.
And so that's 10 times an M type. So this flare up here would turn out to be something like, well, this right here is an M1, M2, M, uh, rather X, X1, X2, X3, X4, X5. So that's between an X4 and an X5 flare. Uh, this image was taken in 2001 when the sun was very that was in 2007 near a solar minimum, and now you had like virtually nothing. In fact, these little blibs right here are probably just stray cosmic rays hitting the detector. Last fall, uh, uh, or last spring rather, uh, again, there was like almost no activity because the sun was entering solar minimum, still in solar minimum. So there was very little there. So last fall, that is actually what the sun looked like. And so the, our next uh, uh, introduction here is to figure out, well, what does the sun look like right now? And so that's going to be the subject of the uh, very next video.